All right, yeah! Thank God for fantasy football. I'm Buster Brown, and the show, well, it's called Redemption Rehab. And if you tuned in today, it's for one reason, and it's to start winning championships in fantasy football. Here we are on our website, fantasyfootballredemptionrehab.com. When you get a chance, you got to check it out. Today, we're talking about the rookies coming in to the NFL that are going to impact fantasy football this year in the 2022 NFL season and for years to come at wide receiver, running back, tight end, and quarterback. So buckle up, get out your popcorn, and let's head over to the chalkboard and check out the facts. Okay, here we are on a website called drafttech.com and we're taking a look at the quarterbacks coming into the NFL in the 2022 NFL draft. Uh, they haven't been drafted yet and draft tech's going to rank these guys as to how they see them going in the upcoming draft. And if you go over here, you can see that Malik Willis out of Liberty uh, is their number one quarterback. You can see his overall rank over here where it says number six. Uh, he's the overall sixth best player in uh, this draft, according to Draft Tech. Uh, and you can see over here, here's the height and weight for these guys. Malik Willis is 6'1", 215 pound, red shirt senior. So he's been in the league four years. We're going to take a look at some of these quarterbacks down here to Carson Strong, uh, Matt Corral, Kenny Pickett, Sam Howell, Desmond Ritter, and Carson Strong. And we're going to decide whether they'll be worth drafting in your dynasty leagues uh, or your redraft leagues. And we're going to take a look at their highlights. We're going to take a look at their statistics and where they might go in some of these upcoming drafts. But before we can really get into these guys, what I like to do in these pre-draft NFL draft specials is to kind of go back and look at some of the guys we liked last year and the year before to give you some perspective of the, how these guys might fare their first year in the NFL. So let's go back and take a look at the last two years. Okay, here we are back on drafttech.com, checking out the quarterback class from last year on the right side of your screen and from two years ago on the left side of your screen. The draft class in 2021 up here came in with Trevor Lawrence. He was the number one overall rated player. And you can see his height and weight, 6'6", 220 out of Clemson. Uh, and the next best player, according to Draft Tech, was the number four, which was Zach Wilson. Um, before we get into these guys over here with Joe Burrow and Tua Tagliavoa, let's see what we feel about these guys. They've been in the league. They, they had a year. Trevor Lawrence got drafted by Jacksonville at first pick overall. They expected a lot out of him. And frankly, he, he didn't have the world's greatest uh, season. Uh, he wasn't worth drafting in any of your redraft leagues. That's the leagues with your buddies that you play in. And in your dynasty leagues, well, you're hoping he comes through this year for you. Um, same thing with Zach Wilson. Didn't do much. Uh, probably, you know, these two guys, Trevor Lawrence and Zach Wilson, were top three picks. Uh, I'm not 100% sure I'd be drafting either one of these guys in your redraft leagues this year. Uh, if you go with a quarterback early, maybe a Patrick Mahomes or uh, Josh Allen over there in Buffalo, you know, you might, and you wait late, you're going to end up with guys like this, but I, I, I can't even see drafting either one of these guys this year until they show me they can do something in a redraft league. They may, may need another year. Same thing with Justin Fields. A lot of these guys really like him. I like Justin Fields because he can run the ball and throw the ball, and he showed a lot last year. He had a comeback victory, uh, and, and, and he showed me a lot for only playing about half the year. He's a big kid, you can see over here, 6'3", 228. But did Chicago get enough players to surround him? That's what really scares me about, you know, this Justin Fields thing. They lost Allen Robinson, and uh, who are they throwing the ball to? So I look at Justin Fields, and I say maybe a backup quarterback in your redraft leagues. Uh, same thing with Trey Lance. Trey Lance, Jimmy Garofalo over there in, in San Francisco was the starter all last year uh, in 2021. But Trey Lance came in a couple times, and each time he came in, he rushed for touchdowns 
touchdowns and he threw for touchdowns, scoring 20 plus points in the two or three games that he played in. So he's got a lot of upside. I do like Trey Lance this year. The problem with Trey Lance is, is uh, you know, because he can run the ball and he can throw the ball, is does his uh, on the field quarterback IQ uh, up there where, where it needs to be or will be in the next couple years? Probably not. And what I mean by that is he's going to recognize the defense. Uh, blitz packages and all this stuff that defenses are going to throw at him. Will he recognize that quick enough to make a play? And uh, Because once they get film on Trey Lance, they may shut him down. So I consider him a backup quarterback in 2022 also. Uh, And the last guy, uh, I want to show you a couple more. Mac Jones over at New England had a pretty good uh, Tom Brady uh, replacement type of year. Uh, Probably threw, you know, close to 20 touchdowns, but He's not going to be drafted in too many redraft leagues. Probably going to be a backup quarterback at best, maybe on the waiver wire. I can't see me or uh, ever drafting him. Uh, but some of these other guys maybe as backups, uh, Trey Lance, Justin Fields, maybe Trevor Lawrence if he you know, shows me something in the preseason. Last guy down here, you can barely see him on the screen here, is Davis Mills. I want to mention him, 6'4 over here, 200 pounds. Uh, you can barely see him on the screen there. But uh, he's the starting quarterback down in Houston. He took over for Deshaun Watson, who's now in Cleveland. So uh, keep an eye on that kid. I doubt I would draft him either. Uh, I doubt I would have him as a backup. He's probably going to be on most waiver wires week one. So keep an eye on him because he might step in and, and show that he can do something. So those are the six quarterbacks from last year. I'm not sure I'm drafting any of them in my redraft leagues, in your dynasty leagues. Uh most of these guys are probably already gone. Uh, a lot of re- dynasty leagues like to take these quarterbacks and stash them in case they have a big year. So let's go back and look at the year before, starting uh, over here in 2020. As you can see up here on the screen to your left, uh, the 2020 mock draft on Draft Tech came out with uh, our gold standard guy that we compare all the guys you're going to see today as rookies to this guy, Joe Burrow. I mean, Joe Burrow, uh, he was the number two overall ranked player in this draft. Uh, What he did in college was just phenomenal. He had one amazing year in 2019 where he took LSU to a national championship. He played at LSU a couple years after transferring from Ohio State where he was a backup for three years. And in that year as a senior at LSU, this guy played in 15 games, won a national championship, with Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, and he completed 76% of his passes. Nobody that we're going to show you today in this rookie class even comes close to that. Nobody's even in the 70s. Uh, Nobody came close to the 5,671 yards that Joe Burrow threw in one season. I mean, think about it. This guy had 5,671 yards in one season and threw for 50 touchdowns 60 touchdowns he didn't throw for 50 he threw for 60 touchdowns i don't want to get it wrong he threw for 60 touchdowns in one season and his quarterback ratio which is something i like to look at i mean they all should be in that 170s range that means they've got they can complete a lot of passes and they're 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 playing the quarterback position well joe burrow had 202 there's nobody we're looking at today in this rookie class that even comes close to that you know what I'm saying? So Joe Burrow's our gold, gold standard. If you get a chance to draft Joe Burrow, he's probably going to go in the top five rounds of your fantasy football league drafts. He's not available in any dynasty leagues for sure. Another guy we really like from two years ago is this guy down here, Justin Herbert. As you can see over here, 6'6", 236 pounds. He was the 12th overall ranked player, and he's out of Oregon. Justin Herbert's a stud, man, out there in Los Angeles uh, Chargers. If you get a chance to get Justin Herbert, he's definitely going to go in the top six rounds, maybe seven rounds of your draft. Uh, I would consider taking him because he's a superstar. And the guy that we liked two years ago, we told you was our sleeper pick, was this guy down here, Jalen Hurts, uh, 6'2", 210 pounds out of Oklahoma. We told you he can run the ball. We told you he was a, you know, average passer. He's not very accurate, but he might get there. And he was a he was a big time player for Oklahoma and before that uh, Alabama, where he won a national championship. And this guy was a Heisman uh, ran I think second place uh, in the Heisman that year for Oklahoma. 
So we told you we really liked him. So these are the three guys that we like from two years ago. We are suggesting you draft any of these three. Uh, wait till one of them falls to you in a round they shouldn't be in. It's what I like to do with quarterbacks. I rarely draft a quarterback early. Uh, I think it's a huge mistake to do that. You should be concentrating on where's my getting my running backs? Where am I getting my big play wide receivers? And can I sneak in a tight end all before I grab one of these guys? And one of these guys will fall to me in a round they shouldn't be in. Last guy I want to talk about because of the is two Ataglio Voa here. He's the starting quarterback for Miami, a left-hander, six foot, 217 pounds, kind of small at the quarterback. Uh, could stand to put on maybe some muscle. Um, the reason I I kind of interested in him as a backup quarterback to maybe a Joe Burrow or a Justin Herbert, like as a reserve quarterback on my team. It's because they got Jalen Waddle down there, and they traded for Tyreek Hill, and they added some speed at running back with Raheem Mostert, and they got Mike Jasicki down there. They signed Armstead as a left tackle from New Orleans, and they're gonna they've got a couple other free agents they've added on that offensive line. So I'm thinking, uh, you know, Miami's offense because they have a decent defense. Miami's offense could uh, put up some scary numbers this year if this guy plays well. So I would consider drafting Tua right now as a backup. We're filming this in early April before the draft, NFL draft. So right now I'm just kind of leery about him. Might be as a backup, but then again, he may show me something in the preseason and I may decide to take him later in my draft after round, halfway through the draft, like round 10 or later as a backup quarterback, possibly a starter. But I'm leery on the starter thing right now. So let's go back to Draft Tech uh, and look at the 2022 rookies coming into the league and see where they fare up against these guys. Okay, here we are back on Draft Tech, uh, the 22, uh, 2022 uh, version of who they like coming into the NFL Draft. They got these guys ranked. We told you who the guy was that they really like. The overall ranking is this column here. We'll highlight that for you. Uh, the number one player quarterback they like is Malik Willis out of Liberty. Played two years at Auburn, then transferred to Liberty where he... Uh, really put up some good numbers not only throwing the ball uh, but rushing the ball and you can see his height and weight in this column will highlight that for you he's six foot one 215 pounds in he's a redshirt senior which means he probably played you know four or five years in college so let's take a look and dive into what makes this kid special Malik Willis played for Liberty in the 2020 and 2021 season. In 2021, he was the Bobby Bowden Award winner. He was a semi-finalist in the Davey O'Brien and Maxwell Awards for Best Quarterbacks. He was on uh, basically the watch list for all the college awards heading into the 2021 season. Like I said earlier, he played a few years in Auburn before transferring over to Liberty, where he played in the Independent League, which is a small school league. Uh, he completed 63% of his passes. He threw for 5,107 yards, passing in his career with 47 touchdowns. His quarterback ratio is not very good. It's 153 compared to Joe Burrow, we showed you, which was 202. The rest of these quarterbacks are closer to 170 which is where you want to be but the thing that set this guy apart was his rushing yards in two years at liberty he rushed for 1822 yards he rushed for another 27 touchdowns running the ball and his total touchdowns for the year in two years at liberty was 74 touchdowns he played you know basically four or five years in college and this kid's a runner and he's got a cannon for an arm I mean, he's going to be able to flick the ball from his wrist, and it's going to be a line drive down the field, and he's going to he's gonna be a good player in the NFL. He's worth drafting in all your dynasty leagues. Uh, unfortunately, your redraft leagues, we'll have to see who drafts him. Uh, I doubt I'm drafting him in any leagues, in the redraft leagues. Why? Because I could pick him up on a waiver wire in most leagues if I need a quarterback for a week or two. The problem with I see with Malik Willis, he checks all the boxes except the one that rookies usually fail at, which is the on-the-field IQ. Can he, can he recognize what the defense of scheme is? Where's the blitz coming from? What's the coverage? He has to learn how to do all that. They didn't show him that at Liberty. He was probably looking at his first and second read on every play. 
In the NFL, man, you're looking at three, four reads on every play. If you got the time, because if you don't recognize where the blitz is coming from, you're probably going to find yourself on your butt. So uh, Malik, Malik Willis may find some uh, some playing time this year, depending upon who drafts them. I suspect maybe Carolina and the sixth pick overall might go they'll go after him. But we'll see in a couple weeks because it's uh, drafts in a couple weeks. Another guy that I want to talk about here is this guy, Matt Corral. As you can see over here, he's moved up four spots from the last time Draft Tech posted a, uh, a ranking. He's the 15th overall player. He Over here, he's 6'1", 205 pounds, and he's a redshirt junior. So let's take a look at what Matt Corral did down there in Ole Miss that makes him so special and why he's the second-ranked quarterback on Draft Tech. Matt Corral is... Uh, Four years down there in Ole Miss, he was a finalist in the Manning Award, the Unitas Award, the Maxwell Award, the O'Brien Award, and the Walter Camp Awards for the best quarterback. So he does have a good resume. In his career, he was 67% completion percentage. He threw for 8,287 yards. Uh, while he was at Ole Miss in four years, and he threw for 57 touchdowns. What makes this guy kind of special, though, is he also rushes the ball. In his rushing attempts in three years as a starter, he had 1,338 yards rushing, and he had another 16 touchdowns rushing the ball in three years, giving him a total of 73 touchdowns in the three years he was a starter. You know, I really like Matt Corral. The thing is, uh, at Ole Miss, uh, he's kind of like, you know, 205. That's really light. Um, in the NFL, man, there's some big dudes going to hit this guy. And at 205, he's going to have to put on some weight. And uh, I don't, I'm not sure about this this pick. He's definitely not getting re drafted in any of your redraft leagues, but might get drafted in your dynasty leagues. I'm not sure why they're so high on him, but... He had a pretty decent career down there at Ole Miss. I mean, he did throw for basically, you know, 73 touchdowns, rushing the ball and passing the ball, which is kind of low. I mean, Malik Willis did that in two years and uh, 74 touchdowns, rushing and passing. So they like him over there at Draft Tech. I'm not so sure about him. I kind of don't see him going in the first round of the NFL draft yet. Uh, clearly, Draft Tech does. I can see him as an early second round pick in the NFL draft and in your dynasty leagues, passing on him totally uh, until he shows me he can play. Another guy that we really like a lot here is uh, Kenny Pickett. Uh, Kenny Pickett's a quarterback, as you can see here, out of Pittsburgh, 6'2, 220 pounds senior. He's moved up five spots since the combine in his pro day, and he's the 19th overall player, uh, according to Draft Tech. Uh, He's a good quarterback. I mean, he had a phenomenal senior year. Uh, I really like him. I think he's going to get drafted in the first round. Uh, he's definitely going to impact fantasy football. Maybe not so much this year, but down the line, depending upon who drafts him. So let's take a look at what makes him so special. Uh, Kenny Pickett uh, is the all-time leading passer in Pittsburgh history. I mean, that's that's pretty big. Um, Johnny Unitas Award winner. Uh, that's huge. I mean, he won the Johnny Unitas Award, which best quarterback in football. He was a Heisman Trophy finalist, so he was at the award show. He's a Maxwell, Walter Camp, Davy O'Brien, and Manning Award finalist for best quarterback. And he was ACC Player of the Year and first team All-American. He set school records in yardage for Pittsburgh, completions, total offense, touchdowns, and threw for the most 300 and 400 yard games in Pittsburgh history. Dan Marino went to Pittsburgh and this guy broke all those records. So I'm pretty sure that he's got a pretty good chance of being a decent quarterback in the NFL. I think uh, he's going to get drafted in the first round. And let's take a look at some of his statistics. In the five years that he played for the University of Pittsburgh, of course, he's probably like a redshirt freshman. That's why he's got so many years at Pittsburgh. So he's a little bit older than everybody else. He was only 62% completion average. That's not very good. But his senior year, he was 67%. Uh, he threw for 12,303 yards, basically as a four-year starter. 
His senior year, he threw for 4,319. But what set this guy apart from everybody else, and the reason he was the ACC Player of the Year, was because of the 42 touchdowns he threw. Uh, he also ran for another five. So this guy, in his four years, uh, he had 81 total touchdowns throwing the ball. In his senior year, his quarterback ratio was 165, which is pretty good. I'd like to see it around 170, but none of these guys we're going to talk about today managed to pull that off. But he also rushed for another 18 touchdowns, so he can run the ball. And his total touchdowns uh, were 98 touchdowns in four years as a starter in Pittsburgh. So, kid's got some talent. I think he's worth keeping an eye on. He's got the size and the weight. Uh, only knock on him was he had small hands. Not uh, people wanting to see a bigger hand out of this guy, which... I'm not so sure that makes a difference if you're winning games like he was in Pittsburgh. I'm not even sure he was throwing the ball to because I've been doing these drafts for years now. And I don't know if anybody from Pittsburgh, running back, wide receiver, tight end is going to even get drafted in this year's draft. Uh, so who he was throwing the ball to for all these four touchdowns is beyond me. Uh, now let's move on down here to Sam Howe, North Carolina. Sam Howe of North Carolina uh, is six foot one, 230 pound junior. So he probably played, you know, three years down there uh, in North Carolina. He's from North Carolina, and he's the 28th ov overall player. And he's fallen uh, 11 spots, as you can see here. I'm not sure why. I, you know, if he didn't have a good, he didn't participate at the combine. He had a hamstring, um, and his pro day was okay. But the kid had a phenomenal career down there in North Carolina. I mean, he was as a freshman, a sophomore year, he, he played very well, but he lost a lot of his team uh, to uh, the NFL. And then his junior year, he probably realized, hey, there's not a lot of talent here, let me get out of here. That's probably what happened with him. But let's take a look at what makes Sam Howell so special. The reason Sam Howell's gonna get drafted in the NFL is because he set 27 school records in Carolina uh, you know he played high school and college in Carolina so 27 school records for Carolina schools he had a better sophomore year than he did as a junior because he had players like Javante Williams running back out of Denver who's gonna be a at least a second round pick in most fantasy leagues Michael Carter who's running back who went to the New York Jets and Dynami Brown a uh, wide receiver who's now playing for the Washington football team. That's why his uh, last year in school wasn't as good as it was the prior year when he was a sophomore. Awards he was the semifinalist in were the Manning Award and the Davey O'Brien Award for best quarterback in college. As far as fantasy football goes, I'm probably in a redraft league not drafting Sam Howell. He's probably going to go in the second round of this draft. He can't pass the ball and he can't rush the ball. And let's take a look at some of his statistics. In his three-year career, he was 63% uh, pass completions. He did throw for 10,283 yards. He threw for 92 touchdowns with a quarterback uh, ratio of 164. In 2021, his last year in college, he rushed for 828 yards with 11 TDs. He finished his career with 106 TDs in three years. Matt Corral up here at Ole Miss, he also didn't participate in the combine. He's had an ankle injury since his last football game. But he moved up and Sam Howell moved down. I'm not sure why. Draft Tech must have saw something they didn't like. And uh, that's why he's moving down the draft board. But uh, we'll see where he gets drafted in uh, April, at the end of April, in the NFL draft. And we'll go from there. Um, but I don't see him getting drafted no matter who takes him in any of your redraft leagues. And he would probably get drafted in most dynasty leagues because he is one of the top quarterbacks coming out of college. Another guy that I, I want you to look at before we let you go is these last two guys, Desmond Ritter. And we'll touch on Carson Strong. This Desmond Ritter, 6'4", 225 pounds. That's where you want a quarterback to be. Uh, this guy's a family man. He's already got a family. He's probably, you know, 24 years old or 25. He's been in college like four, maybe four years for sure. He's the 41st overall ranked player. And, uh, you know, it says here he's a redshirt junior. So he probably has been in the league college four years. But he's had a pretty good career in Cincinnati. Took him to the college playoff series 
last year where they lost, but he's one of the reasons why they win. And he's had a pretty good career down there in Cincinnati. Let's check out what makes him so special. Desmond Ritter was had the third most wins by any college quarterback. Third most wins. He was eighth in the Heisman Trophy. In 2020 and 2021, in the four years that he played at Cincinnati, he was a Johnny Unitas, Maxwell Award, Walter Camp, and Davy O'Brien Awards finalists both years. In 2020, he was ACC Player of the Year. In 2018, he was Rookie of the Year as a freshman. His overall passing, he was 62% completion. It's not very good. And in the four years that he was a starter, he had 10,239 yards passing. He threw for 87 touchdowns, 30 his senior year, and his quarterback ratio was 158 his senior year. So if he has to, he can take off and run the ball. In four years at Cincinnati, he had over uh, 1,500 yards rushing, and he had over 28 TDs rushing the ball for a total of 115 TDs in four years. This kid had a pretty good career. Like I said, he's he's pretty much an adult with a wife and kids, so he's got a lot to show. I do think he gets drafted. It's a possibility he could go to the Detroit Lions with the last pick in the first round, but more likely he's going to be an early pick in the second round for one of these teams that need a quarterback. So keep an eye out for Desmond Ritter. I would not draft him in any of your redraft leagues, and I'd consider picking him up in all your dynasty leagues. And the last guy we're going to touch on real quick here is this guy, Carson Strong. As you can see here, he's the 58th overall player. Might get drafted at the end of the second round or early third round. He's 6'3", 215-pound redshirt junior. This guy doesn't run the ball at all. He stands in that pocket, and he'll stand there until someone's open. Let's take a look at his career out there in Nevada. Carson Strong in 2020 and 2021 was the Mountain West Offensive Player of the Year both years. And he was all Mountain West first team both years. And in 2021, he was the semifinalist in the Johnny Unitas Manning Davy O'Brien Awards. Uh, some of these he was a finalist in both 2020 and 2021. In 32 games that he played for Nevada, his completion percentage was 68%. He threw for 9,368 yards and 74 TDs. He had a quarterback ratio, which is really low, as on average of 147. I, I got to be honest with you, I don't know where he's going to get drafted. I'm for sure not drafting him in any redraft leagues. And uh, there's a question whether you're even taking him a dynasty league. But Draft Tech has him really high, number 58 overall player, which suggests maybe second round, second day NFL draft. So when you when you look and see where this guy's go, I mean, maybe he'll go out there in Seattle and he has a chance to compete for the starting quarterback. Who knows? We'll see what happens out there in Seattle. So those are your quarterbacks for the 2022 season. I would probably not draft any of these guys in your redraft leagues, but some of them I could consider drafting in my dynasty leagues. That's all we have on quarterbacks coming into the NFL in the 2022 season. Uh, good luck with everything you're doing, and make sure you keep an eye on these guys to see where they're going in this year's NFL draft. I'm Buster Brown, the show. It's called Redemption Rehab. Good luck. <laughs>